Hi friends, my name's Matt. Uh, I'm a recovering addict and alcoholic. I do videos on YouTube and uh, most of them are like adventure based videos. What I'm really passionate about uh, is the way that I'm able to also do recovery videos at the same time. As I'm seeing here editing on my uh, next YouTube video, I realized I haven't done a recovery video in quite some time. And what's neat about my recovery videos is that I'm able to just sit down with you and talk for a few minutes about things that I have found very helpful in my life. I talk about how it was, uh, what I did about it, and what it's like now. And so basically, when I, when I first started getting into addiction, alcohol and drug addiction, uh, it was... Like, I don't want to throw out any excuses. Uh, it's because I'm an addict. And I got into a pattern in my life where I tried to do away with the negative things in my life by adding substances to it. Things that would instantly make me feel a different way. Or like drinking would help me skip whatever was going on. So like, say I was having a bad day. I'd get through the day to a point where I could be alone, where I could drink, and then I'd drink myself to oblivion, and I, it would kind of fast forward me to the next day. Except I would find eventually that that fast forwarding actually just put me on autopilot, and the, the person that took the wheel was a crazy driver, right? And when I would come to the next day, I'd realize that I... That fast forward wasn't very healthy. It hurt my relationships. It hurt my my friendships. It, it hurt my work. It hurt my personal life. It it hurt my thoughts of myself. How I I thought about myself, you know. And I was really bad too. I I I was a level ten. Like if it's one through ten, one not so bad. Ten like Olympic gold medalist, right? I was a nine headed for a 10. I was practicing really hard to earn that gold, right? And for people like that, from my own experiences, there wasn't much hope. Uh, it was basically just a, a tailspin, right? A nosedive spiraling down until I was gonna hit the ground, poof, big plume of smoke, and, and that was pretty much going to be my story. So. I went to rehab twice, actually. I, the first time really was, was to kind of try and, and make things better for other people, I guess. I, the, my work, family life, everybody thought that if I went to rehab, they were going to fix me. And when I got out, everything would be great. You know, all my sins would be forgiven. The second time I went was was kind of to get away from my problems as I've thought about it afterwards, right? Because I, I sit and think to myself, I'm like, well, why did I do this? Why did I do that? I guess it was because the second time I just needed an escape. And I knew that rehab was somewhere I could go for 30 days and it was a, a change of pace. There would be people there that, that understood the difficulties of addiction, uh, other people to relate to that were in the same kind of, of situation or lifestyle. Uh, and then the third time, well, that was when my, my little plane nosedived and hit the ground and there was that poof of smoke and I had finally hit rock bottom. I decided to go back to rehab and this time try and do it the right way. Try and get out of it what I could to make for a better life. I knew this time that I was going to have to pay attention. The previous two times were, weren't were for me, they were for other things and other reasons. And when people talked about addiction and being an addict and the reasons why and all the psychology, I didn't hear anything that was applicable to me. I was listening to them trying to actually prove that I wasn't an addict or an alcoholic. I could continue drinking. I could do cocaine like a gentleman, dang it. And I, that wasn't very healthy. 
by the third time, I knew that I needed to go somewhere really good. I needed to pay attention. And if I didn't believe something, if I didn't understand something, I needed to find a way that I could come to believe it, that I could come to understand it so that I could grow. Because I knew that if I got out this time and I went right back again, that my life wasn't going to amount to much, you know? Uh, and I asked myself, well, who do I want to be? How do I want to be? Do I want this to be the story of me? This is my, my whole time in history. The one shot I get here on earth, this is going to be the story of Matt. And I decided no. So when I went to rehab, when I went to Betty Ford for the final time, I decided to stay as long as I could. I decided to listen to other people and no matter how I felt about it, take their words of wisdom for the way that it was. Uh, and that's where I really realized that in order to make an idea of myself and really figure myself out, I couldn't listen to the idealized version of me that I that I had in my head, that, that I had come up with who I was and I used as an excuse to let all of the negative stuff go basically and not believe that about myself. So I started listening to the counselors and the psychiatrists. I started listening to the lectures and the science behind it all and, and trying to come to a better understanding. I realized that there are a lot of good things about me. I have a lot of good qualities, even in my addiction. All humans do. We all have good qualities, right? Things that make us special and unique and that if we use them can help other people and, and help the world around us. I discovered though that I had a lot of bad habits, a lot of bad feelings, a, a lot of, of my own routines weren't healthy routines. Uh, there wasn't any way that I could get good interactions from people because I wasn't paying attention to the parts of me that weren't productive, the parts that needed work, that I needed help with, right? And so that started in a lot of different ways. I uh, paying attention to what other people had told me about myself uh, and how other people viewed me. Even if I didn't see it as accurate, I needed to figure out why it wasn't accurate. Why did people feel this way about me? What was it that I was doing or not doing that put these labels on me, right? Like laziness, being dirty or messy, uh, inconsideration, stuff like that. And by, by realizing that that's how I was, right? I was dirty because my environment would be dirty, right? I would, it would become messy. I, uh, I was lazy because I wouldn't get up and go clean the environment. I would sit and look at it and think to myself, oh, poor me, right? Why don't I have a clean place? And, and there were other things about my personality that I had to figure out. And doing that wasn't particularly easy. It took a long time and a lot of work. I, uh, and slowly though, I was able to address everything and start to come to a new understanding of myself. And, and instead of just thinking, okay, well, this is the way that I am, right? I am a messy person, for instance. My, my house is always going to be a mess. Instead, I took advantage of the fact that the place I was had little ways of teaching me how to change those things, how over a course of time, I could build a new pattern, right? I could reprogram myself basically to be how I wanted to be. First though, I had to accept how I was, right? I had to realize these things were things I needed to work on. And that's why Betty Ford was so good for that because they specialized in those little things because recovery for me isn't about one thing. It's not about not drinking or drugging. It's about not drinking and not drugging and finding ways to correct the things in my life that had gone astray or the little things that my life had programmed me to do, right? So for instance, on the, uh, in the vein of being messy, right? This is how it, I came to understand myself. 
when things started to stack up that became too much, I would stop doing the dishes because it seemed like obsessing about that thing and figuring it out so that I could change it and make it better or sit there in that woe is me pity party seemed more important than doing my dishes, more important than sweeping the floor, more important than making my bed in the morning. What I came to learn in Betty Ford though, was that by doing those little things, doing the dishes, sweeping the floor, making my bed, it, I was able to build a better sense of self-esteem for myself, which allowed me to concentrate on those things that were too much for me in a way that allowed me to simplify them and then figure them out and then finally address them. I was able to nail down one little thing at a time and one little thing at a time, it got better. And it also got easier because every day that we do something different than how we did it before helps us make that a routine. It becomes instinctive now, right? So nowadays when something gets to be too much, something that I have to think about or work on, instead of sitting there like just thinking about it, I actually am, am like reprogrammed to kick into gear, do the dishes, sweep the floor, make the bed. And while I'm doing that stuff, I'm at the same time working through that problem, just like I'm working through doing the dishes, right? There's a rhythm and a pattern to it. And if I just start and keep doing it, it'll finally get done and it'll be nice. I. Uh, a lot of other stuff really helped. You see, the thing about Betty Ford is that they had a lot of very specialized tools because recovery isn't one thing. It's a whole lot of things that all can run in, in a pattern and a rhythm that makes life better, basically. So it's it's psychology, it's diet, it's environment, it's it's knowing all these different little tricks and, and, and things to help get me out of my own head also ways to pass the time that aren't using, right? And, and treating other people in a way that that makes life better, makes them want to be involved in my life, uh, shows respect to other people, communication, things like that. That's why now here on YouTube, I like to do a lot of recovery stuff or I want to get where I'm doing more recovery stuff and I'm sharing the same little things that they shared at Betty Ford uh, because I spent six months there. I had to. Like I said, I was shooting for that gold medal addiction, right? That that like I'm such a good addict, I'm, I'm better than the best, right? Uh, and there wasn't much of a way to pull out of that. So I had to learn everything and I had to learn how to apply everything once I got out of rehab. I, and that's really the trick. So here I want to share those things with y'all guys. I figure what I'm going to do now is like every third video or so, I'm just going to take one of the tools that I learned at Betty Ford and I'm going to share them with y'all guys. And I'm going to try and share them in the same format that Betty Ford shared them with us, right? Like I... Uh, for, for instance, the lectures. I got a lot out of the lectures because the lectures shared a lot of the uh, the little nuances in life, the little things that I did that I didn't really realize and how to stop doing them and how to build better habits and routines, basically. I fear that's what I'm going to start doing. It starts with this video here, uh, just talking a little bit about how it was, what I did about it, and how it is now. And now it's really good. Uh, I've come so far that my instincts have completely changed basically. Like whereas in the past if something happened and it would give me the instinct to go drink and use, uh, drinking particularly because like I said that let me fast forward through the night, right? Something stressful going on or something, I could just drink then I'd pass out, then I'd wake up, and it's the next day, right? Instead, now when something happens, I don't even think about drinking. 
I think about using one of my tools. I think about using 10 of my tools. I, I use things that help me build my own self-confidence and, and it comes natural nowadays because at first it's hard. At first I had to sit down and figure it all out, you know, and then do those things. Nowadays, I don't have to do so much of the figuring it out because it's become very second nature. So when something happens, I can just step into doing what I need to do to have a more happy, more successful, more fulfilling life, basically. And part of that is getting to share those things with y'all guys. All right, this video is getting long. I, I think I gotta sit down now and figure out what I want my next recovery video to be about. I think that I'm gonna start with the lectures and then I might get into some psychology and stuff afterwards. But I really think that the science is probably where I wanna start first. I hope this video finds everybody doing well. Remember, never give up, never surrender because you're worth it.